Hello, Simona, <clears throat> and thank you for the invitation to talk about our favorite subject, which is, uh, you know, the, the psychosensorial effect, the physiological sensorial effect of reading newspapers in the flesh, so to speak, right? Um, books and newspapers and, and letters, I mean, letters written on paper, not on the screen, uh, they are part of our physical reality. They are part of the physical reality of the reader. They have weight, they have smell, uh, they, are, they have a visual and tactile uh, presence. And that's a very strong aspect of the uh, effect the sensorial effect of paper. It's, it's usually ignored. People just think that it's a matter of content. And in fact, particularly people who have been used to, to read online have this take-for-granted attitude that uh, all they're dealing with is content, not the support, not the medium. And so they don't recognize the difference that is happening to them uh, reading from line uh, from the screen or reading from the paper. McLuhan probably was, because of course McLuhan is the medium is the message and it's everything to do with that, McLuhan was probably saying one of the most amusing but at the same time really true things about the physical experience of reading the newspaper. He said people don't read newspapers. They step into them, just like if they were taking a bath. They enter the newspaper. Of course, it's a joke, and it's not a joke. It's, there's something true. First of all, you sort of wrap it around you. People protect themselves in subways and, you know, particularly with COVID styling. They protect themselves with using the paper and they wrap it around themselves. So that is something that's important to keep in mind. Um, but the other thing, I think, is that... Um, Paper, paper are, are, is not just uh, yet another support for a content. It's also an experience that is quite different in terms of its impact on our sensibility. Even though we don't recognize it, uh, one of the most important thinkers and writers, researchers about uh, newspapers and, uh, and reading on paper is Anne Mangan. And uh, she wrote this thing, which is, I think, I'm, I'm just going to read it to you. It's so beautiful. She says, print reading is, a, is kind of like meditation, focusing our attention on something still. And that's really important. She's a literacy professor at the University of Stavanger in Norway. And she adds, and it's a whole different kind of immersion than responding to digital stimuli. I think it's healthy for us as human beings to sit down with something that doesn't move, doesn't ping, doesn't call on, uh, on our attention. And this is really very key. Uh, and I think it's probably the most important thing that we will lose if we don't continue to read on paper is the sense that it's the place where language is absolutely still. When you th language in your mind moves, my language when I'm speaking moves, language on screen moves. Well, it, you move it rather than it moves, but the fact remains that it, whatever comes out of the screen is light through. The light through the screen is taking control of you, whereas you having light on paper, there's this very big difference McLuhan pointed out, uh, having light on versus light through, the light coming through the screen controls you. The light coming, bouncing off the page to you, you control it. And you control language on a book in a way that in, 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 in on screen is absolutely impossible. And that control, that power that over a language that is stilled in front of you, I think is something that we have to really study and hasn't really been given enough attention. And then the other thing about the stillness of language on paper is that in a novel, for example, 
It is that which allows you to complement by your imagination uh, the story, the characters, the sound, all the sensory experience that you that is not expressed for you, you have to express it, which means it develops your imagination. And it, the same goes for newspaper or novels. And the difference there is, of course, that from the time of television, even from the time of photography, we have been used to, you know, other people developing our imagination for us. You know perfectly well that if you have seen a movie that you read the novel about, well, you're disappointed. The movie doesn't tell you the story the way you remember it because you actually recreated the story. But if somebody else recreates the story, well, you know, it wasn't as good as yours. That's the, the story of it. So we've got to think about that. We've got to think about the issue also of how you, well, I mean, studies prove, many, many studies prove that we read better and we, re we retain, we, we, our memory contains better what the content of what we have read on paper rather than what we have seen on screen. So anyway, there are a few, think, a, few thought, a few thoughts about, you know, development of identity too. It's very key, very key. Uh, I recommend to all the Ministry of Education I get access to, uh, and all professors I talk to, I recommend to them to uh, really consider imposing reading on paper, at least to the same extent, particularly in small classes, the classes of the, you know, the junior classes and so on, by the time you get to university, it's too late. But I do recommend very much that you uh, have this, uh, this opportunity to develop your internal content. You need memory of content, not having it all on your cell phone, not throwing all your, your, your information to some external thing. You need something inside. And you know what? Reading on newspaper puts things inside. And I think that's really important. So good luck with this class. Good luck with this lecture. I hope this has been useful and uh, looking forward to uh, hear from it again. Bye.